Uh, delighted to be with you. Uh, appreciate John, uh, his hospitality here and the opportunity to visit about agriculture with Kansans today. Uh, appreciate Dr. Estes. Uh, this is the 15th, 15th year in a row in which he's been uh, my host at the Three Eyes Show. Uh, and I appreciate the opportunity that uh, he and his organization creates for those of us who care about rural American agriculture to, uh, to come together. Um, I, I wanted to make certain I got here because I was fearful that you would think that uh, we elected Miranda to the Senate and uh, he never showed up again. And so the Three Eyes Show was, uh, is something I enjoy. I guess we'll see if that's still true uh, this year uh, with the conversations that we're going to have. But I have appreciated the conversations, the common sense and good judgment that I get from Kansans uh, every time I'm home. We're continuing the practice that uh, we started uh, 14, 15 years ago in which uh, I come back to Kansas, come home every weekend. Uh, and uh, we'll return to Washington, D.C. on Monday. But this is that chance to make certain the things I'm working on in our nation's capital are the appropriate priorities of Kansans uh, and that we have the common sense and good judgment that Kansans provide in the conversations that I have. It's these opportunities. Tim and I are both uh, perhaps in a race to see who can do uh, the most town hall meetings. Uh, he's following our practice of 69 town hall meetings. I completed one this morning in uh, Scott City, uh, that I think is number 50 or 51, now out of 105. Uh, and it is, uh, again, those conversations that I hope make me a better and different member of Congress than I otherwise would be in the absence of the input of Kansans. Uh, I think uh, agriculture today, our farmers and ranchers, production agriculture in Kansas and across the country face perhaps the most difficult challenges uh, that we've ever faced. Uh, and I think the survival of, uh, of agriculture is at stake. These are real and serious issues, uh, and we operate in a world in which uh, most people do not understand the value uh, of what production agriculture does. Some of you have heard me tell the story back when the Democrats took the majority of the Senate, and this is not a partisan statement, but a congresswoman from Connecticut became the chairperson of the Agricultural Appropriations Subcommittee. Uh, that Congresswoman Rosa DeLore is from New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, she came to me on the House floor back then and said, uh, Congressman Moran, would you please come visit with me? Told me of her new position and said, uh, I just need you to tell me what's important. And I was very appreciative of that chance. We need to have greater outreach between rural and urban. Uh, and I went to her office a few days later and began to explain the farm bill and crop insurance and agricultural research. And just a few minutes into the conversation, she says, no, no, no. That's not what I need to know. Could you just tell me what a farmer does? Uh, and it is the circumstance, and, and Cong the Congresswoman was the most important person in the House of Representatives when it came to spending on agriculture uh, during the entire time that the Democrats were in the majority, so until January. And we've got to figure out how we educate that urban, suburban country we live in, uh, because in, if we don't, uh, the things that I think that will impede agriculture's success are the things they will put in front of us. We're going to have a discussion in 2011, 2012 on the Farm Bill. Uh, Senator Roberts is now the ranking Republican on the Senate Agriculture Committee. Uh, I'm a member of the Appropriations Committee, including the Agricultural Appropriations Subcommittee. Agriculture is and will continue to be forefront in what I do. In large part, that's because my interest in public service or politics revolves around this belief that we live our lives in a pretty special way in communities across our state. And if we're not careful, we're going to lose that way of life. And in the absence of success in agriculture, we, uh, the day, uh, we hasten the day in which our communities are no longer uh, viable and we have no shot at returning our sons and daughters back to uh, communities across our state, the places that we all call home. But I think the threat, while we're going to have a conversation about a farm bill, and Tim is in a great position, a member of the House Agriculture Committee, where I served for 14 years, uh, will be in a great position to, to debate, discuss, and to fight for the things, the priorities that we think are important in a farm bill. But I happen to believe, while that's an important discussion, and when we can talk about how much money is going to be spent on a farm bill and what our priorities and programs ought to be, but I think the greater threat that we face in agriculture is not the amount of money that we spend in a farm bill, but the onslaught of rules and regulations, the thing that Tim talked about, just a few minutes ago as the thing that we got to be the most concerned about. And you add to that, again, in this urban and suburban environment, you add to that animal rights activities. Uh, I think we're in the crosshairs of two very important social, society, uh, cultural kinds of things in which this lack of connection with farmers and ranchers means that people are making decisions and encouraging their elected officials to make decisions that are detrimental to our chance of success. 
Just visited with a lady from Scott and Logan County talking about ferrets, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and prairie dogs. Uh, it's a huge issue in Kansas, but especially in that part of our state. But it's just an example of where people who think they are doing something good are doing something that ends the ability for us to earn a living in ranching and in production agriculture. Uh, we've got to tell the story better than we're doing. Uh, I would say that uh, those environmental regulations are at the top of the list. The Senate just recently voted, the House has done so as well, to get the EPA out of the greenhouse gas issue. Uh, here in Garden City would be a good time to remind uh, folks that greenhouse gas regulation, the Clean Air Act, continues to be a problem for us because, as you may know, the Sierra Club was successful in delaying the Holcomb, the, pr the production of electricity, the building of a plant at Holcomb, uh, and we're now waiting on the remedy stage of a, of a judge who's determined that it may require an environmental assessment study to continue the process of building a coal-fired plant. You wouldn't think Kansas would be at the forefront of these issues, but we are. Uh, and we need to have some victories in those. The Senate has voted on a straight party line vote, 47 Republicans, 53 Democrats, not to remove greenhouse gases from the uh, Environmental Protection Agency's jurisdiction under the Clean Air Act. We have burning of grasslands in Flint Hills. We have NEPA uh, requirements in regard to building a uh, electrical uh, generation involving uh, wind power. Uh, these are just Kansas issues. We now have pesticide application uh, coming under uh, attack and our aerial sprayers are, they, that may be non-point source pollution in each instance, each one of those aerial sprayers. Fumative dust, uh, the regulation of, um, of agricultural dust, uh, the feed yards, and the idea of whether or not the flatulence are a contributor to greenhouse gas issues. It's just one thing after another. Tim's right. In fact, I, I told Dr. Estes that he was using my words. That's what we were whispering about. Uh, common sense and sound science. It's not that we're not environmentally interested or we want to do things right, but we want them to be based upon sound science and to have some practicality and common sense. Uh, the, the trade agreements that Tim uh, issued or, or talked about are true, uh, import, truly important. 42% of what we produce in agriculture in Kansas is exported someplace else. And on top of that, I would add this huge issue. Uh, we've got to get our country going again, its economy, jobs created, uh, and, in, and we've got to pay down our debt. Those two things are related. There is so much uncertainty in the, in the economy the most common conversation I have with a business owner is what next is government going to do that may put me out of business? And if we're going to be successful in getting our country back on its economic track and creating jobs, we've got to reduce the debt, and we can do that in two ways, and we ought to do both. One is to reduce spending uh, in Washington, D.C., and the second is to grow the economy that puts people to work and therefore having more people paying taxes. Uh, I'm worried greatly now about access to credit. All the regulations that are being developed uh, by a new set of laws passed last year by Congress uh, is creating real uncertainty for our local banks, our community banks, and others to make decisions about whether or not to make a loan. If we get to the point in our country's economy in which your local bank is uncertain or unwilling to make a loan, our ability to recover is significant. All those rules and regulations are another component. The tax code, it's uncertainty. No one, we, we bragged about fixing the estate tax, for example, for two years. Well, all we did was tell people, instead of the, the advice we could have given them is die in 2010, now we can say die in 2011 or 12, but we can't tell you what to do in 2013. That is a ridiculous um, pro uh, problem that we place upon citizens of our country in which they have no certainty about what the tax code and what other government programs, regulations are going to mean to them. Um, I would say that on top of getting this economy going and being successful in agriculture, at the forefront ought to be an energy policy that develops our own energy resources and reduces our dependence upon OPEC, which restricts the supply in order to raise the price. And there is no place in the country that is more damaged by high energy prices than agriculture in rural America when we have long distances to drive to go to the grocery store or to the doctor, uh, and we have long distances to, uh, to go to, the, to school. And you add to that fuel prices, diesel fuel, fertilizer, natural gas, if we're going to have an economic recovery in this country, we've got to get away from this administration's plans, which they speak on one, the president said we're going to open up the, uh, the Gulf to, to drilling and exploration again, but not one permit has been issued since he said that. Uh, and we ought to be pursuing all sources of, of energy in this country to get control of our own country's destiny, but to do something about ever-increasing gas prices. The list is long. The issues are serious. 
and we're going to take uh, a lot of work for us in this room, in this, under this tent, and for us in Washington, D.C. to make people certain that they understand. Incidentally, Rosa DeLore, we invited her to Kansas, the congresswoman from Connecticut, and she came. She and I had two different ideas about how to do this visit. Um, my thought was I want her on a farmstead along Highway 27, someplace between Sharon Springs and Elkhart. I thought that would be an eye-opening experience for this lady. Her first question was, well, could we just meet at an airport? Uh, we ended up in Little River, population 500, Rice County, Lyons is the county seat, Cheryl's Cafe, cheeseburgers and coconut cream pie. I was pleased to see that she wasn't a vegetarian. Uh, and Kendall Hodson, a local farmer there, put hit her in his pickup, picked up his kids at the local school. We spent the afternoon with neighboring farmers explaining what this crop is, what this piece of equipment does. We took her in and showed her the FSA office in Lyons. She'd never seen one. Farmers, wouldn't that be a great thing if you'd never seen the inside of an FSA office? Showed her the local hospital. She'd never seen a hospital so small. Next day, state fair in which uh, the best opportunity we had was four 4-H kids showing her their exhibits at the state fair. They are our best ambassadors and we need to use them to tell why this life in uh, Kansas, this life in rural America, and this life on the farm still matters.